trying to not overextend myself this month, so this ended up kept mostly to new releases, but we do have a decent crop to cover, with one genre in particular on a real tear these past few weeks. No point wasting time, let's just dive right in. This is Album Impressions. Yeah, the photographs are the Oh baby, it's happening. The 2000s post-hardcore and emo revival, I mean. Cause like, yeah, that's basically what Static Dress are going for here. I hear a lot of early thrice, and especially Gloss Jaw in this album, in the sense of the harsh and metallic textures mixed in with the melodic riffing and the upbeat energy throughout. And while the hooks don't quite pop as strongly as those aforementioned acts, they're still plenty present. The album also plays enough of song archetypes and doesn't let itself run too long, keeping it fresh from start to finish. Especially finish, even. Those last two tracks are some of the best on the record. Sadly, the throwback also sense of the lyrics, which paint a lot of post-breakup angst and anger, with a focus on the emotional core that leads to a lack of detail in the writing that makes it a bit hard to sympathize. Though at the very least, there's no overt misogyny to speak of here, just wallowing in dark thoughts. It's not a deal breaker when the music's this strong though, and like, yeah, it's a throwback, but who cares when we're hardly getting much else in this vein nowadays. I say this with complete sincerity. Hell yeah, Ohava made the same album for the fourth time! Woo! Like, I was considering not covering this one, but no, screw y'all. This rules, and you need to be reminded to listen to it. Ohava have always made lushly textured, fiercely melodic black gaze and drone, and this album leads in hard on the drone, with an entire quarter of the album dedicated to one long drone piece, and large swaths of the other tracks leading in on waves of guitar fuzz. And beyond that, the pacing is more languid, less visceral, but no less intense or overwhelming for it. Ohava's sparse writing has always had environmentalist themes, and here they focus on, well, extinction. The slow, painful death of humanity at our own hands as nature claims its rightful dominance over us, in retribution for the violence we've committed against the environment. It's sure, a bit heavy-handed, but not without merit. And like, I mean, the music's what really matters in the end, and it may well be their best record to date. No I guess this month's theme is just straightforward examples of genres being done really well. And Sever is to more contemporary post-hardcore what Static Dress are to mid-2000s post-hardcore, basically. There's a strong sense of melody throughout, where the leads and hooks stick in your brain after only a listen or two, the riffs are crushing and meaty without ever devolving into chugging metalcore or gent sludge, and the vocals are soaring and powerful. And like with Static Dress, I'm not too impressed with the content itself, seemingly bouncing between and even conflating post-breakup angst and general despair at the state of the world, with words too vague to tell which is which, but like, eh. Sometimes the music can still connect even when the words themselves don't, and I'm way too into the sound to care that much, so yeah. Pretty solid stuff, not much else to say about it. I never wanted to be that girl. I turned 29 earlier this month, so as a prank to myself, I decided to listen to this album in full for the first time. Which was a good decision because, yeah, this is pretty good. Very clearly a divorce album, and I kinda suspect some of this was inspired by Adele. Named after her age at the time, an entire album tearing into this guy to expose the ways he wronged her, giving us insights into Pierce herself along the way. And between Pierce's lovely voice, the strong but not overindulgent songwriting, and the lush production, it's hard to find much fault with any of it. Even if it's not as, say, diverse as the ever mentioned 21. If I do have any other gripes, it's that I do feel a bit too much of the focus is on her ex, and I don't come away from this learning as much about Pierce herself as I'd want to, and the emotional gut punches aren't exactly the strongest either, but that doesn't stop us from being compelling the whole way through, and a shining example of why Pierce is one of the leading voices in country right now. <laughs> Okay, so what I get out of this album is that Haru and Memory seems like she listens to a lot of different styles of music and really has her ear to the ground as to what's popular and critically praised in the music scene at large. And that's given her a ton of ideas, but she doesn't quite recognize that maybe not every single one of those ideas quite goes together. And the end result is an album bursting of color and creativity across a huge spectrum of rock and pop sounds, but can't really wrangle it into a cohesive project. The album it reminds me of the most is Bentley's Frosting from last year, but that one was stripped down to just the right amount of weirdness to still work. I like this on the whole, but it's gonna take more listens to really make sense of it, and without a trustworthy lyrical translation, it's also hard to really piece together the lyrical themes, so not even gonna try there, nope. It's certainly more ambitious than even Haruki Shura was, but it feels like some of the immediacy, tightness, and emotional potency got lost along the way. Day day, 
Okay, so much for gospel fans waiting 17 years. Silent Drive just put out their first album in 18 years, and it feels like no time has passed at all, since this is some primo mid-2000s post-hardcore if I've ever seen it. Aside from some kind of rough, gruff screams at a few spots, I love how everything here sounds. The riffs are crisp and punchy, the acoustics are pristine and sparkling, the choruses are anthemic and soaring, and there's just a lot of color and variety across this perfectly paced, perfect length runtime. The content's a bit muddied, though. Similar to Static Dress, there's some broadly painted themes of love and heartbreak, though it coalesces into the loss of a friend to cancer by the end, and the lines kind of blur on which songs are about which, or if they're all about the latter, but that wouldn't quite make sense, and yeah. Uh, between that, and especially with some really questionable lines on the spirit, I'm not quite sure it's doing for me lyrically, but the sound is so strong I barely care. Been a good month for post-hardcore, this one. Speaking of, yeah, more post-hardcore. This is again a bit more contemporary, with a bit of a modern chorus slant to it, without fully diving into its worst habits either. Big choruses and heavy riffs, but maybe a bit of lack in variety or color compared to some of the other albums this month, but eh, it still rocks hard and has a ton of fire to it. The lyrics are a bit scattered, balanced between trying to untangle a rough home life and a look at the shattered world outside that home, but there's, at the very least, an anti-authority streak across the entire album, though one that doesn't ever quite call us into outright anti-fascism. Maybe understand Understanding there is a problem, but not quite seeing the reasons why. And between that and lacking for any attempt at a solution or a resolution, it does make me feel a little distant from it, though not so much that I can't still enjoy the music on display here. Wouldn't say this is doing it for me quite as much as Static Dress or Silent Drive, but it's still another bang of a record regardless. Alright, and there we have it. Yeah, maybe I'll get burnt out on all the rock-solid post-hardcore releases if they keep it up, but for now, I'm all here for it. Next month is looking like it could be pretty busy too, so we'll see. Anyways, catch y'all later.